Hi, I'm Joe James, and in this video we're going to learn to create a simple neural network to analyze a data set. So we're going to use Keras as a front end and TensorFlow back end, and the data set we're going to have is the MNIST data set, which is a well-known data set. It is basically a, a data set of digits, handwritten 0 through 9 digits, and we have to predict what number each one of the images of these is. So it's a grayscale pixels from 0 to 255 with 0 white and 255 black. We have a 28 by 28 matrix and it's already converted to integers for us. There are about 60,000 training records and 10,000 test records so it's a nice sized and nice formatted data set that's really easy to work with so that's why we're starting here. So first step is to load all of our data into a NumPy array. We're going to use NumPy arrays for all of our data storage and you could also use pandas. I chose to use NumPy. So here we download the data file. Uh, I put it onto my desktop and loaded it locally. You don't have to do it that way. You can also try these commands to load it directly off the cloud. And then after you get all this data loaded, you should have four different arrays. We have xtrain, and that should contain 60,000 images, or 28 by 28 arrays of integers, actually in a NumPy array. It's a 47 megabyte array, so it's pretty sizable. And then we should have 60,000, basically this is the answer key. The uh, Y train is the answer key. It tells us what number each one of these images in X train is. And then we have a test set of 10,000 records. There's a 28 by 28, that's called our X test. And then we have X Y test that is uh, our answer key for the test values. And that is just a 10,000 single dimension array. And so what these look like, the Y train and Y test, I picked a couple at random, it's just an integer. That's the answer, right? We're trying to identify. So now that we have all the data loaded, we're going to use matplotlib to visualize one record. So I set the color map here to grays. You can use any color map you want. There's a bunch of different ones in the docs. I put a link to that here. I recommend you, just, you know, check out my links to the docs and try out different values in here. So the color map basically gives us a white background with a black or grayscale uh, foreground for the number. So we're using matplotlib and color map. We're doing mshow to show a plot basically of points and we reshaped this to 28 by 28. That's pretty much all. We just randomly picked uh, one value out of our X training set and we plotted that. And here's what we got. And we can see that's an 8. That's the same one. It's number 55 that we picked up here. And we can see that the answer key shows that it's an 8. So that's how we plot one value. Very easy, a single line of code in matplotlib. And, but how do we plot a whole bunch of values just so we can get a better feel for what the data set looks like? Well, I set up a little for loop here. Um, we used a figure with a larger figure size so that we have a little more space to show stuff. And it's a, basically a three by six matrix to show a bunch of subplots, 18 subplots here of different digits so you can see how they look. And we enumerate through our uh, axes we show a digit on each one of these little plots, subplots. I took out the tick marks so they don't distract us from the pictures. And then we show our plot. So what we can see here is 18 different images of what these handwritten numbers actually look like. This is our data set. This is what we're trying to read and interpret. And some of them are sloppy, but you can see each one is written differently. You can see a few different threes here. They're all written differently. So we're trying to predict unlabeled data what what the number is just by looking at the values of the of the array. So let's look at the distribution of the training data labels. This is the answer key. How does the answer key distribute across 0 through 9 values? Well here we have 0 through 9 on this x-axis and you can see how the distribution is. It's about even roughly. Uh, there's a few more ones than some of the other values but uh, kind of evenly spread out for the most part. And code-wise, we only have a few lines of code here to do that. Uh, I got I used bin count 
uh, which is a NumPy function, to count the unique values of the training set. And that saves that into a counts array. And then I use nums just to get the index of those. So it's, a, it's an array of the indices, 0 through 9. And then we plot that. We plot nums and count as a bar chart. And we show that. And then I also printed out the array down here on the bottom. That's our counts. So that's the data distribution, what it looks like. Now let's jump into the neural network. So I have a lot of notes here on how the model works, how we create the model and compile the model and what it does. And I also put links and I strongly encourage you as you, as you download my Jupyter Notebook, try out these links. These go to the documentation so that you can try out different settings in the model and see how they affect the output. So we're going to use TensorFlow to train our model with the 60,000 training records we have. And then we're going to compile a model. And we can classify 10,000 records. And we'll get about 98% accuracy, as you'll see in the end here. So to create the model, we're going to stack a bunch of layers onto our neural network. And in this model, we're basically going to have four layers. We're going to start out with a flattened layer that reshapes our data into a one-dimensional array. And then we have a dense layer that tells the model to use the output array uh, of 512 and it sets um, the activation function to rectified linear. So let's look at some of the code down here. We start out by importing TensorFlow and then I just switched off some of the error messages because they print out error messages if you don't. So uh, that just overrides the error messages. I normalize the data. We divide it by 255.0 to convert it to a 0.0, .0 to 1.0 scale. So it's basically a 0 to 1 scale. It just processes faster and cleaner. So next step then is to create our model. And the model is a sequential model. Like I said, we have four layers. The flatten layer just takes our, our data and flattens the shape of it. The second layer, we're going to have 256. Oh, gee, I said 512 up here. I changed it to 256. You can use whatever you want here. Um, but I use 256 neurons in, in my neural network. And the activation, this R-E-L-U, is the activation function. And that's rectified linear. But there's a few different other ones that you can try. Just click on this link, and you'll see a, a page full of activation functions that you can try out. And then next is the dropout. So we have a dropout layer that basically kind of works like a reverse gain control. It drops out some of the input to help avoid overfitting of the data. And then lastly, we have another dense function that condenses our output down to 10 outputs. So one for each value that we're trying to predict, right? 0 through 9, so we want 10 outputs. And that creates our model. Next, we're going to compile our model. We have an optimizer, and I chose Atom for the optimizer. And that's an optimization algorithm and Adam actually uses stochastic gradient descent. You can read about that. I put a link to it. You can also look at other optimization functions on the documentation page here. And that updates the network weights, so the weights of each neuron. And then we need a loss function. So we have a loss function. I used uh, sparse categorical cross entropy. Don't ask me what that means, but it's a loss function. You have to use a loss function to compile the model. And what it does is the loss function, it measures how accurate the model is when it's training. And it tries to keep the model on course. And then we need a metric, something to measure. What are we trying for? We're trying for maximum accuracy for ours. So you can try to minimize mean squared error or whatever, but for us, we're trying for maximum accuracy. In other words, accurate predictions. We want to get the right answers. And then we fit our model by plugging in the uh, training data. And we call epochs is basically number of iterations it's going to go through in the training. And we chose four epochs here. You can adjust that to whatever you like, 5, 10, 20. Bigger number is going to get you slightly better accuracy, but it also takes a lot more time. It scales linearly. And then lastly, we do evaluate. And that tells us how accurate our predictions are. So when you run that, 
you'll see that each epoch takes a, a little bit of time to run. It's not a lot. This whole thing runs in about a minute. Uh, but your output is 97.91% accurate. It varies each time you run, but you get more or less 98% accuracy each time. It's not a lot of code, but it is kind of complicated and hard to understand. So you need to spend a little time tweaking some of these values in here and reading through the docs on the links that I put up above so you can gain a better understanding of how this model works. And then lastly, you might want to generate predictions for your test set. You might actually want to see how some of the predictions are and how accurate they are and how it relates to the data. So this, I think, is probably the best part. We can see our predictions just by saying uh, model.predict x test. So we passed in the test data and then we run predict using the model that we just built up above. And then we can print out a prediction, a random one here, number 88. And that's what it looks like. It's an array of floating point values. This is the probability, 5.59 times 10 to the negative ninth, that it's a zero. And then you look for basically the highest one. And it looks like six here is the highest one. So we're looking for the highest one. And number six here is the highest value in this array. So I also have a little print statement that gets the index of the highest value from this list. And here that's six. Index is six. And then again, I, I plotted the value at the same position so you can see what it looks like. So this is what the six looks like that we're trying to predict. And after we ran the predictions, you can see that we predicted that it's a six. And the way we got to that six is by calculating through our neural network the probabilities of it being each one of these numbers, zero through nine, and choosing the highest probability. So that wraps up this introduction to neural networks using TensorFlow and Keras. I hope this was helpful for you. If so, please click the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I hope to do more future videos on machine learning. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.